Fretless bass. It's a beautiful instrument. So full of expression and nuances, you know. Um, I see a lot of questions uh, online about how to get the, the, the growl from the fretless, the moi, if you want. And I guess we all understand what that means. It's basically this kind of um, evolving tone, right? You, 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 pluck, you pluck a note and it goes moi, rather than boink or boink, which is more of the fretted version. Um, and there are a few factors that are combined to, to get this kind of sound. Um, I'll go through a few of them. Let's just see if I've tuned up. Yep, close enough. So why does that sound like a fretless? It's of course a growl, but there are several other things involved as well. Um, like vibrato, like glissando, things like that. But the growl, the nature of that, I think, these are my thoughts. I, I have not based them on science or anything, but I, I, I'm sure somebody has done some research. Um, a growl is a slight buzzing of the string on the fingerboard, which is a difference between the fretted bass and the fretless bass, is that the string is stopped to a fret, a metal fret on the fretted bass, and wood on the fingerboard. So, the fret buzz, if you will, sounds different from the two basses. So what you hear here, hear here, is, uh, is some fretboard buzz. In a way, but it's, it's and we find it more pleasing uh, than fret buzz. And you can make it, you, you can make more or less of this fret bus, and it has a lot to do with how you pluck the string. I would say it probably has all to do with how you pluck the string. If you pluck the string close to the bridge, and you pluck it in an out from the bass motion, like not this normal downward pluck that we normally use, but if you pluck it away, you get very little of this growl, you don't get anything. I might as well be playing an out of tune fretted bass. Right? It doesn't sound very fretless. If you make the same kind of plucking motion a bit like between the pickups. You still don't get a lot of growl. Now, if I move to a more traditional way of plucking, that is plucking towards my anchor, like when I pluck with an index finger, it goes through the string and to the thumb or towards the thumb. Then the angle of the pluck is more downwards toward the direction of the fingerboard 
instead of up, it's down, and you're kind of pushing the strings vibrations more uh, into the wood of the fingerboard. You hear that? We're getting more of the of, of this moi. We're not there yet, but but we're getting there. Plucking away. Plucking down or into the next string. Okay, if we move the hand even further towards the neck, if we just pass the neck pickup. Stuff starts happening. Now we're starting to get this moi, but we have to help it a little bit with our left hand or with our fretlessing hand. Um, so with some careful vibrato, and I'm talking about careful vibrato and vibrato that's thought through. Um, I've heard a lot of instrumentalists on all kinds of instruments, uh, since we're talking about the fretless bass now, um, also on the fretless bass, who have what I call or, a rabbit vibrato. You know, like it. And it's like, oh, I'm gonna, it's fretless, I'm gonna vibrate, so I'm gonna do. Something like that, and not much variation. But if you focus on, uh, developing a vibrato from nothing and up to a slow vibrato, especially in the low register, you'll be able to get the moi out of your instrument easier. That's for demonstration purposes that I'm doing it that slowly. I'm leaving the note unvibrated and then That's another technique, it's like a, a two finger hammer on from like a, a note below or depending on the key you're in. So here I'm starting on a C on the A string and then I'm hammering on the C sharp and into the D. My main note is going to be the D. I'm going to play a D, but I'm going to slide with hammer ons. You hear that? With some vibrato, you get a nice moi. Now I'm over the fingerboard. Now I'm just ahead of the front pickup. When I add some slides, also you get more of the fretless moi. And then if I also add some some reverb, or quite a lot of reverb, and a little bit of delay, and maybe some modulation on the delay. You get even more of the fretless moi kind of effect. Another important thing is setup of the instrument. You need an instrument that will resonate well. So a good way to check it is to play some harmonics and just let them ring. You know, this, this thing sustains better than most neck through basses I've had. I've read and heard countless people say that neck through have way more sustain than bolt-ons. This is a cheap Mexican Fender Jazz with a bolt-on and the neck pocket is not particularly impressively snug, to put it bluntly. I can fit a few business cards in here. So what it is, it's, I don't know, this neck is probably quite stable. Um, 
and I mean, I have not changed bridges. It's the old kind of uh, basic, simple fender bridge. So it's, it's not an exact science how this bass sustains as much as it does. And that is, and th these harmonics have nothing to do with how I've set up the action of the bass. I'm not pressing down the string. It's how, it's how the open strings sound. It just goes on and on. So you need to have, if you want to get a good growl, you want to have good sustain. Um, and I mean, you just have to try out some, some basses in the shop, I suppose, and have a relatively fresh set of strings. My strings are DR Pure Blues. These are not new. When they are completely new, they are a little bit metallic uh, to my taste. So I like to play them a little bit and kind of get rid of the first harshness in the tops. Also, how you set your pickups is gonna be important. I like to have most of the bridge pickup, I get some hum because these are passive. This is a Mexican passive jazz bass, but I can live with it, with the noise gate and everything. And I roll off the treble, not all the way, but maybe halfway. And I have a little bit of neck pickup because I like a little bit more meat in the low end than what I get from, from the bridge pickup soloed. But if I turn everything up full, like many people do, uh, it sounds like this. You hear that? The, the um, fretless buzz uh, is more pronounced uh, because of the treble. You can, you can hear it in the high end in the, of the frequency spectrum. A little bit of a zzz. And there's quite a lot of deep low end uh, for my taste here for this kind of sound that I'm going for because the front pickup is, is up uh, to the max. But if I just roll off the treble and keep both pickups up. Roll off the treble until I don't get the unpleasant high frequency buzz. Then I can live with that and then I can adjust the front pickup to taste. Notice the vibrato. There is no rule saying you have to have a quick vibrato on every note. You know, check out, listen to your favorite guitar player, your favorite singer, whatever. Just listen to the vibrato. Try to focus in on the vibrato, how they express each, each note, how each note is different. Um, this is the beauty of an instrument that can move between pitches without these, the, the frets, without, you know, that can move freely between pitches. So to get the growl and the moi, it's a combination of having an instrument with a good sustain, a proper setup, the neck should be straight, not completely straight, you need a little bit of relief to give room for the string to vibrate, but not too much, because you don't want to kill the vibrations by having to press the strings too far. And a new, but not completely new set of strings, um, a technique to get the moi, to get the growl going, as we discussed, and also proper 
thought behind the fretless elements such as vibrato and slides? Um, I would say a combination of vibrato and your attack is, are the two most important ways to discover the growl and the moi. I hope you got something out of this video. Please hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think. Let me know what else you want to see on this channel and I'll see you later.